Hello and welcome back, everybody, to the fourth game of the day. It's between XCOM and No Reg. This is a winner's match, of course, so the winner of this one will go 2-0 and will be one away from the main stage of the tournament. We're live, and they have just got into Nuke. That's going to be the fourth map picked. I think it's been four different maps so far. I think we have uh, Inferno. We had... What did we have? We had Train. Now we've got Nuke. I think that we've seen four different maps uh, and the knife range just happened looks like XCOM is going to be starting on that CT side and we've seen quite a bit of Luke recently ever since those recent additions outside and the balcony being removed and Luke being made a lot more CT sided and it, it, it's all been very influential and it and it really has changed the balance of this map to uh, be around that 13 to score line you can't just go all the way around and flank on the a site anymore like you previously could. The pistol round is going to be no reg. Going for the straight up ramp execute. All five players charging straight onwards. Like a herd of elephants and soon he's not going to be able to back off in time. Another man. He's next in line. It's Petit Tech eliminated. The Molotovs are down and XCOM getting absolutely slaughtered in this one. Marquez going to be able to well, he's actually going to drop there, and Ponchek and Goofy both finding kills, so Croman and Marcellius have to do big work here. He's got his full HP, but he's being wrapped around onwards, and Marcellius is right around this corner. He gets spotted out as well, but it's easy. It's so easy just to fire off those shots. Croman does force a man off that bomb, but he's got a lot of time left to have to eliminate this one. And he does find two, and that was almost good enough for the round, but 1-0. And XCOM are able to hold on. I thought he was maybe even going to do that then. That was just an incredible two-piece. See how fast he got those pair of frags. Now XCOM, they will be able to go for a good buy here. Two UMPs, double M4A4. There's a Famous there as well. No Reg, obviously not going for this one. Just you know, while getting that bomb down, you can invest in the third on that T side. It's a CT. It's quite important to stop the bomb going down so you can put a 3-0 scoreline on the board instead of just a 2-0. T-Tech going to be closing in, and it's with that Thanos that he hasn't even been damaged down yet. He's going for all four. Going to be helped out by soon in the final moments there. Just Chroman left, who is able to eliminate one of those rifles. One of the Thanos is dropped, but... There's no way that he's going to be able to get out of this one alive feasibly. He's just hit a lot of eagle shot or so, but there she goes. It's 2-0 at XCOM. Start this one off quite strong. Five AK setup from the no reg side. Obviously, a very common setup to go with while you're... Five AKs on the board, and while you've planted the bomb in that initial round, in that pistol round, Croman's going to eliminate Petit Tech from above with a headshot. Not expecting somebody to be on top of Silo that early, or expecting a little bit of coverage, maybe? A bit of miscommunication from XCOM there to not have all their angles checked, and it means that no reg are going to be a man up before they get into this one. You can see XCOM are playing quite an aggressive defense. They've got soon pushed all the way up here into Trophy Room. He's looking straight inwards, and Akers has this angle pretty much on lockdown. While outside, Marcellius is going to find another one. That's the AWP dropped. That's round over from XCOM. That bomb is dropped. That could be a spoiler factor. As no wretch need to find some more frags, but it's not going to happen for XCOM. Two to one. That's the Polish side. Got a pretty good lead here on Nuke. XCOM going for this next buy-up as well, which is not always what we'd expect to see. Having that scout out, actually. Deagle and a CZ on other two players with M4s bought elsewhere is 
not something that we see every day. XCOM playing this economy game very aggressive very early. Obviously wanting to just get maximal rounds on this CT side. Obviously not very confident on T side, that is. TechSec playing behind this smoke. It's not going to dissipate in time. You can see he is locked backwards there. There's no reg. Finally going to make this approach inwards and onwards. Zevez, nice flashy peak. There's no reg. They've got so much map control here. They've got the whole of this outside area. And XCOM, they need to peek into the crosshairs. Have no angular advantage. And still find the kills. It's not something that you always see. Soon is downstairs. He's got that angle. Pretty fantastic at that. Could have been able to grab hold of the AK-47, but just gets charged down instead. Needed to be a little quicker on that one. It's TechSec taking the corner, spotting out that Molotov, whiz overhead. And then the three versus three. Looks like no reg needs to go to the A site, which is exactly what they're going to do. They've got the one man up top, Ponchek, who's fallen down. It's shot in the face. And no reg have played these rotations pretty picture perfectly. Now, Tech just taking this corner, taking this angle. It's Petit Tech from behind as well to find that final headshot. So, three to one. And they don't even need the kits. That shows how CT side did nuke is. Even with the pistols sometimes, no reg just have way too many angles to check and, and watch out for. And it ends up like that with XCOM finding the kills downstairs. The first one with the Deagle. Outwards with the Skite as well. Not really doing much. But then they had to push to one of these bomb sites. And No Reg made a great call to, uh, to go towards A. That's exactly what they needed to do. But if you don't hit the frags, if you get wrapped in around by a CZ up close and personal. Sometimes I can just knock you straight out of the map. Goofy. Long range there. Pops open Marcellius' head. Croman's able to find that follow-up frag. When you hit a nice shot like that, you just have to back off. You can't keep over-committing for it. Sometimes you have stars in your eyes after finding those shots and go for the overpeaks. And that's exactly what happened with Soon as well. Losing two players kind of unnecessarily. Another headshot in 10 seconds goes for the straight peek out, of course. Remember, we've got Burning Blades versus Deep Dark Danger coming up next here on ELC Gaming TV, so be sure to tune in for that one. This is the third of eight games today. We've got five more games of Counter-Strike coming, this included. Four more after this. And there's Croman in the back line. It's one more frag in bind, but he's only got 10 seconds left, and he's not going to go for this. He is. He's actually been spotted and heard out. They know where he is here. Croman, nice flick. Texex not going to be able to capitalize. So another round for XCOM, an AWP save for Croman. And a fourth round on the board for the CTs. It's like a, a tactical pause for no reg here. They don't want to fall too far behind. They know that they're keeping the Polish economy honest, but here is exactly where you have to uh, not let your foot off the acceleration pedal. You need to keep the pressure up if you're XCOM and, and, clo and close this half out consistently and, and effectively. Unless you're going to be on a 10-5 scoreline, then it's all to play for. On the CT side of Nuke, absolutely anything and everything can happen. Thank you. 
XCOM fifth round in here. And they've got that orp out onto the back of Soon. He's only on three frags, but with very early days so far. And no Reg, despite not having much money, still going to go for the reinvestment. That's four CZs for them and an AWP on Croman. Lots and lots of purchasing power for this XCOM side. Exec just has his angle down and he backs straight off through the smoke. The clouds were very nicely placed there to allow him to just backtrack through. He's got the angle line down onto the second man. He drops. T takes it to swing in as well. So X comes crossfires just working to perfection here. And Akez can't do anything about it because he's locked right out of the picture. He's got an MP9. There's no way that he's going to be able to do anything here. There's no opportunity to pick up a rifle, I don't think. He's now going outside, taking a very long-range battle and engagement. He's even been spotted out. It just gets worse and worse. A couple of flashes don't do anything. And he's trying to just get up close and personal with the CZ. And it just doesn't work out. All three players of XCOM peeking at once. And now it feels like they're trying they're really getting their head into the game on this CT side. They've got the AWP rolling, now the double AWP setup. They're peeking very effectively off each other and no reg can't break them apart they need somebody to really step up here if you look at that scoreboard so far it's been Croman, but they've only put one round down so if he cools off no reg are going to be in an even worse position and he dies right off the bat goofy it's just dot hunting for him and pistols are out to clean up this round goofy what a magnificent display outside Double alt setup's always fun on nuke. Until you lose the bomb site. In which case, it, it's very difficult to get back onto the retakes. And no reg, they haven't got anywhere near that bomb site many times so far. It's just been them being held out of these bomb sites, held off of this map. But finally, they get onto A, and now this is where the double alt setup becomes a lot less effective. They're going to have to find these frags against my best advice. I'd have definitely picked up another AK-47 there. But T-Tech, they're trying to trade off each other, all coming from the same angle. And there's the peak, the headshot. A two versus one, and Zevis is not able to escape. The clutches, the claws of Soon, who puts XCOM on a seventh round here. Molotovs are always really nicely placed for XCOM, especially on the A site. You're not going to be able to go for the, the B rush down vents. You're not going to be able to go for an A split either in the first 20 seconds of the round. Thanks to this. It does mean that they expend a lot of this utility fairly early with the smokes and Molotovs being placed, but that's exactly what you have to do on Nuke. You've got to throw it out quick and worry about your low utility yet later and use those positional advantages to your absolute advantage. T-Tech going for this peak out. Players are very low. There's one gone. Marcellius goes for the repeat, but they're trading evenly and effectively. And no Reg finding these frags. So it's all down to Goofy, and he's even been spotted out as well. Here's Zebus gone right underneath, and they trade places. Goofy likely isn't going to be able to do a lot here. Does jump straight back up ladder. And he's going to make noise coming up here because he can't take it slow. And that means that Chrome around this corner knows exactly where he is. And he's going to have to go for a quick scope. Misses that shot. Here's the second chase. He's dying. Oh, Lord. Using it like a shotgun right now. Goofy finally going to put that one on the board. He's got a smoke. A Molotov. But he's not doing anything at all. And Chrome not even going for the peak. That's so intelligent rotating round. And that's a second there. 
for no reg. Chroman could have definitely lost that one if Goofy had just placed the smoke down, got the defuse. No idea that he had gone for the full backtrack. That's a good way to guarantee a round. If you get there in time, you can absolutely put a point on the board just off the back of that. Now XCOM is another one of these half buys with CZ 75s on two players. Tech second pawn check on those. He is going to find one, so good trades from XCOM, but Akez is going to be able to find a headshot in the meantime, and that all rains out, and Marcellius finds another. Outside completely taken care of, and now XCOM, what are they going to do to get back into this one? Walks into the AWP again. Now Petitech has it all to do on the A site. He's playing up top with an M4, but he's even got players around him, behind him. Croman's going to be such a spoiler factor. There's no way that Petitech's going to be able to get two or three kills here. Surprise kills at that. Marcellius, oh, gets his head blown clean off. And that's the bomb dropped. And Petitech goes in for the second. Akez taking care of. And now Croman from the back line is going to be able to tap him away for the third round. But that did get interesting. XCOM have actually gone for this force buy, so something that you don't often see. XCOM have just refused to save at every single measure, and this could put them so far under in this half. You can see they're being broken apart here. The MAC-10 did come out, but it nevertheless still finds a frag. And you can't allow that to happen if you go for the force buys. Players all round, and that CZ is going to take the corner pretty fast and find just the one. There's a man right around this corner, and Croman's likely going to be able to find him. You see, they're always wary of these pushes, and Croman's going to be able to snap onto Petitech's head and find one more. The CZ is actually doing good work here. Picks up a Galil, does Texec, but does need a quad kill to finish this one off. And no Reg just watching and waiting for it. But there's a headshot straight onto the A bomb site, and Marcellius, he's here locking it down with an AK. 47 hits the one bullet. Great first bullet accuracy. And 7 to 4. And this is the hole that I said XCOM could find themselves in. If they don't take that round, they can't go for a buy up this time. They could certainly go for a quasi with a couple of pieces of body armor, but not even that. Just the pistols. No Kevlar. Texec outside, finds a headshot, there's another one, two gone, Marcellius able to trade out Goofy, he was trying to take it from another angle of engagement, but no Reg, losing players thick and fast, you've got to be very wary about this, and Bonchek from up top is going to get his head shaved off. Petit Tech here. Just waiting for these final two members. He's got a great angle, and it's one that Akez might not check. They're going inside and round and behind him. And he can't hear those those gun or weapon changes, but he turns around just in time, and it's actually both with the PT-50. That's unbelievable. Marcellius, he trades it out, but again, he needs four. And no reg. How are they going to be able to get off of this fourth round here? XCOM with a, a clean eco. Going to now be able to salvage an AK-47, a Mac-10 as well. The Mac-Daddy. Plants a bomb within that smoke. And he's going to be able to flash his way out. A little tickle of damage there and soon's going to be able to 
Blow him straight over. XCOM back in the driver's seat now. All picked up. AK picked up. And they're actually going to be kicking themselves after that. They've not got enough money to go for a buy. They were just against pretty much a full eco. That's one thing you're supposed to take without much damage being done, let alone losing it completely. Kills coming through for XCOM all round. Zevers trying to take tags with the Deagle. It's just a one head shot as he almost spots another man off on the cross. He does just that. He's just trying to flick out and find as many as he can right here. And he's finally taken out by the AWP. Soon finding three. And XCOM now definitely in the lead. But on nuke you're looking for this 10 11 rounds as a as a minimum so this one is definitely not all said and done just yet this could definitely flip around the other way if no reg either take a couple of rounds here or the pistol Straight through this smoke. He's actually going to check his back as well. Soon didn't know that one was coming. And no Reg finally finding these initial engagements again. They had a good streak of three in a row previously. But now they've got to fend off XCOM. Especially Tex out with the M4. He's been pretty consistent so far. And SPT Tech again just looking left and right. Both of these avenues of approach being taken care of by the Polish rifler. Ponchek's actually looking to swing in towards main as well, so he gets a little bit of attention there. He has that angle on lockdown, and there's the follow-up. A great headshot, split-second double kill, and that's double digits for XCOM, but yeah, 11 is really what they want to be looking out for here, with no reg barely having any money at all. This is likely just going to be an 11 to 4 scoreline. I think that we'll probably see that here. But let's see what No Reg can do with these nades and just the pistols. They're going to go towards outside, so long-range engagement should be able to be taken care of by XCOM and its goofy big spray downs. Just one man left, and he's going to be just chased away. 11-4 to four for Team XCOM. and Petit Tech 
going to be the first man in, joined by Soon. They've got coverage elsewhere as well, but here comes the bomb, and Petitek going to be eliminated. One bullet headshot there, and Marcellius just backs off. He knows that he doesn't have to re-engage and risk losing his life in this whole portion of the map as well. Zevis from behind is going to find another one, and no Reg. They're just crushing in here, and this pistol is often the one that can fall apart, but not for the Norwegian powerhouse here on Nuke. They're going to put the most important round of the match on the board. And that means that they're going to have a good stead going into the to the rest of this one. They're going to get out rifles. Five rifles, in fact. Four of which being the Famous. One M4A4. And XCOM. Just with the pistols, like to see them throw in something quite close range, close quarters combat. I don't know why they uh, choose to put the pistols outside because they don't have the advantage in these firefights. Texec does put one on the board, but and he's just standing out in the open. Needs to close in with the CZs. Big opportunity missed by Ponchek there as he grabs the M4 and he springs right back into the A site. He's got two players to contend with here. One on the site, one just sneaking his way up vents. And that smoke place means that Ponchek has the time to strike. He pounces, finds Zevis. And now this A site has been completely compromised. No reg. They need to close this out. They need to put rounds on the board here and close this gap. I don't think it's going to happen. They're actually going to go for this retake as well. There's the first one, Ponchek going down, but it's uh, CZs all round. All three players likely going to be able to pick up rifles in this scenario. Well, two rifles picked up, and the rest going to buy up. Well, two AK-47s, no reds going for an early tactical pause once again. No second tactical pause of the, of the game here on Nuke. They took, what, about five rags in? And it really did help. We have players all round. Doing a good job. And that's when they took those three consecutive rounds. As soon as they they took that uh, tactical pause early, they had the they had the one. They lost a couple, reconsidered, reevaluated, and took one more. So, lots of Norwegians in the chat. I think so. I can feel right now. XCOM very likely going to close this out if they can just keep the economy of no reg low. Nice swing in from Ponchek there. Zevers, he's eagerly trying to peek the corner of this smoke. Able to take a couple of tabs inwards, but backs off in effect. And no reg. They need to keep their head in this one. They've got four players with Kevlar. That nade's not really going to do much. who's only able to get the one. Zevis down to four lonely HP points, and Goofy does put another one up on the tally. Just these two players left, and I think that this flank's going to work wonders. Marcellius is stuck down vents. That uh, hope in the world. That name! Oh. If Zevis hadn't backed off there, he would have died.
13-5, XCOM just a couple of rounds away from closing this one out, but they're against a single AK-47. This should likely be a 14-5 a scoreline before No Reg can put those guns on the board. That's exactly what they need, though. No Reg just needs to keep their head in the game so when they have weapons, they can try and make a comeback. Because on Nuke, it's every single gun round is a battle on the CT side. Well, on the T side, sorry. It's so hard to take even one or two gun rounds. So No Reg are definitely not out of this one completely just yet. In this round, it could be over. Just with the AK-47 dropping and now XCOM making their approach inwards. Chroman looking the wrong way, being forced to look upwards by Ponchek. He played that one all alone. It's 14 to 5, so XCOM looking more than good here to be able to take this one back. But it's not that clear cut. No, Reg, they've got no AWP. They're running very low on utility. And on Nuke, you need your Molotovs and Smokes. Luckily, that's all that they've really bought. They're very light on flashes and no real HEs. And you can see three of those five Smokes and Mollies have been used already. So Akers and Zevis only going to have those two more. XCOM just, can just bleed them out here and wake this up. And make sure that when they push into a site, it's against no utility. They're not going to have to push into a single smoke. And that is, in fact, all no reg have. One single smoke. So when this collapse comes inwards, no reg will have to win the firefights. There's no other way. There's no plan B here. There are the return smokes for XCOM, though. Now TechSec, he's downstairs, obviously. No Reg. They're playing with the man towards this ramp area. Service, they're losing players sick and fast, though. Petit Tech finds those two. And Podcheck's here for the flank as well. This is going to be the easiest kill of his life. One bullet, one kill. TechSec's wrapping round onto Chroma as well. Another headshot. And it's just the one man left. XCOM should be able to dispatch... In this one versus three, but Haas here. And there's a second man. That Molotov's placed, and he gets a knife out for no reason. He's caught completely out in the open. So match points now for XCOM. It's going to be ten in a row, and this is going to be their easiest opportunity to take it over the finish line. XCOM, they've got ten opportunities to win this one. And again, two MP9s, a CZ-75, and two Famuses. They've got even less utility than they had in the previous round as well. This should be a done deal for XCOM. There's the opening. This time outside, Chroman's gone, and that's one of the rifles gone as well. This is a horrible, horrific situation. It's like a horror movie. Everyone's dying. And check here, finds that second man. XCOM have seemed so on point. I'm incredibly impressed by them here today. No Reg, obviously, a team that you kind of expect to um, uh, be challenging to get out of the group stage. But it's XCOM, left, right, and center, finding cracks. Have been traded back, but Goofy wraps in with another headshot. And now. Two frags stand between the poles and a victory here on Nuke. A very open bomb plant, and he lines two up. Soon, surely can't do this. He's right behind them. They're going to have to turn around. They're not checking it, and Akez, he's not looking the right way. He lines up. There he is. He finds both of them soon. That's unbelievable. Nobody checking their backs, and in Counter-Strike, you've got to check your back. Who's behind you? You don't know. Closes out the game as easy as that. That is something special. XCOM looking extremely convincing here on Nuke. And that has been um, 
They're, them just steamrolling in this tournament so far. They are now 2-0 in the Swiss system. They need one more to make their way to that main and final stage where they'll be competing for the $10,000. Anyway, we've got four more games coming up. We're going to take a 10-15 minute break, but don't go anywhere because we've got so much more Counter-Strike coming soon. See you in a minute. 